Here we go, doing a morning run in the Hoka Clifton 5s, and yes, the comparison's coming up real soon with this guy, the Beacon. Shout out to Grant for encouraging me to get this comparison going the between the Beacon and the Clifton 5. Uh, but I also want to recognize Kent. I'm listening to you as well. Like I realize that these two shoes are not in the exact same category, but I would make the argument that they were that they are close. Not exactly, but I, I think a lot of people are interested in this guy, but also are Clifton and Hoka fans. And so it's kind of that debate that goes on when you're at the running shoe store or on running warehouse or wherever you're getting your shoes, you're like, uh, which one to go with? So I'm gonna give you my full thoughts soon, but first let's get a quick, easy six miles in. Whoo, all right, come on. Oh, and then an interview coming up. It's kind of interesting, come on. Okay, ready when you are. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, just one last thing. How do you pronounce your last name? Demore. Just, yeah, Demore. Seth Demore. All right, yep. perfect. That's that's what I that's what I love to hear. All right, here we go. If you're ready to go, let's go ahead and count it down. Three, two, and one. Just wrapped up an interview with Dusty Porter, who is a YouTuber that helps people uh, grow their YouTube channel. And I learned a lot from Dusty over the last two months and therefore because of you guys because of you guys subscribing and liking these videos and commenting oh the comments i i, I know i say that every single day but he is blo dusty is blown away by the growth that is happening on this channel and so basically he just interviewed me for his podcast and i just gave i like i got to give you guys the credit because you guys are growing this channel you guys are and one of the questions he asked me was um what is basically a tip that you would give for other YouTubers who, uh, yeah, that want to make better content and make better YouTube channels. And I said, community, I said, community, build a community. And it's all you, it is all you, it is happening because of you. So thank you. And thank you, Dusty for the interview. Anyway, his podcast, it's going to go live here in a couple hours. Whoo, exciting times. Here's the channel. It's because of you. Mm. All right, just on, on my way home, and I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I'm doing this. Don't judge a book by its cover, right? I am going into a mall, and I don't like going into malls. They're a little too crazy for me, but I will do it for you. I'll do it for you, YouTube. I'm going to be investigating Skechers running shoes today. What? Okay, Skechers, the company, launched in 1992 out on the West Coast. And one of their first uh, shoes ever was, remember those black combat boots? That was one of their first shoes that the company ever launched. Well, persistence pays off, I guess. In 2011, they signed Meb Kaflesgi, one of the best American distance runners of all time, and he became like their go-to athlete for their running shoe lineup. Well, I'll be honest, in high school, I, nobody wore Skechers, and now this is 2000 to 2004, like nobody wore Skechers, ever, for, you know, for running, well, they didn't have running shoes, but for anything, like, it was kind of a look down upon company, frankly, and I, I, I'm, I apologize, Skechers, for judging you ahead of time, but isn't it fascinating to watch a shoe company grow, and I've heard that they are now ranked I think in the top five, if not the top three now, in the United States for overall athletic shoes sales. I could be wrong on that, but I think I read that recently. Maybe it was in Runner's World. Anyway, we're going into the mall. I'm investigating for you guys. Again, can't believe I'm doing this, but don't judge a book by its cover. All right, come on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's the GoMap Speed 5 and then there's the GoMap Razor 2. Okay. Um, these are the Razors. Okay. But the GoMap uh, Speeds are the ones that everyone is after.
going with the Skechers Ultra Go for $59. $59, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we're going to talk about this back at the house. I am impressed, Skechers. I'm impressed. I can't believe I'm buying Skechers running shoes. I can't believe it. So I'm excited, man. All right. Let's so I appreciate see. you right, helping. Well, yeah. Awesome. Enjoy. Thank you. We'll yes, I will. All right, cool. I'll be back. $59. $59. Oh, my. Including tax. Including tax. Wow. All right. We will see you back at the house. Here we are. Here we are. This is the first time I've ever owned anything from Skechers, let alone a running shoe. So this is not my full review. This is not even my first impression because guess what? I did not run in this shoe yet today. That'll probably happen this weekend, so stay tuned. But to begin this reflection on Skechers and affordable running shoes, I'm going to give a shout out to Matt in Nebraska. Thank you, Matt, for asking the question down in the comments. Matt was just wondering like 10 days ago, he said, uh, like, what about affordable running shoes? Because guess what? The Nike Vaporfly 4% is $250. Hello, who can afford $250? It's tough out there, right? It's like, it's, that's a lot of money. And so when $59 comes up on the register, I cannot resist. I cannot resist. So what is my first impression out of the box? Not necessarily, this is not running related. This is just out of the box. No bells and whistles. And that is related to the shoe and also the buying experience at the store today. There's no bells and whistles. And perhaps that is why Skechers is able to keep the price down. And that is probably my first and major concern about this shoe and frankly, probably all Skechers shoes is that the build quality does seem a little lower. All right, just holding it in my hands. I'm not holding a Solomon right now. I definitely know that for sure. And so what will be the longevity of this shoe? We'll see, we'll see. And listen, folks, I understand financially times can be difficult. Like we all go through ups and downs financially. There's a lot of college students watching these videos. And listen, when you're in college, like you got to save money. Like maybe you're working a, a, a job or a second job and you're trying to like make ends meet and you can't go out and buy like expensive running shoes. Or maybe you have to put like a lot of miles, like four or five, 600 miles into one pair of running shoes because you can't afford a brand new pair. So I get it. This might be an option. Sketch, Skechers might be an option to kind of tie you over until let's say you land that first job where you're on salary and you're a little more financially stable. And listen, 18 months ago, I bought this Hoka Clayton for $20 off of Craigslist. $20 used. Supposedly it only had 15 miles in it, but I, we, listen, we were, I'm, I'm just being transparent with you guys. Like we were in tough financial times 18 months ago and I could not afford to go out and purchase, you know, hundred dollar running shoes. Like no way. Like that was out of the question. And so I got on Craigslist. Yes, I got on Craigslist and I bought used running shoes. These guys for $20, I probably put at least 300 miles in these shoes and they didn't fit me great. In fact, they probably were a, si a half a size too big, but listen, it worked in the moment. It worked while times were a little difficult financially. Therefore, I think Skechers has an opportunity to disrupt the running shoe marketplace. Hoka launched in 2009, Hoka, and I believe that Hoka has completely disrupted the running shoe market especially for ultra runners and long, long distance runners, because Hoka has so much cushion in their shoes, like long distance ultra runners, like people running a lot of miles, they love Hoka. And I think because of the Skechers price point and hopefully the quality of the shoe, which we're about to figure out, I think Skechers is poised for, an, for, for disrupting the running shoe market, meaning competition is a good thing in running and in racing and in the running shoe store experience. If we have running shoe companies out there that are selling shoes at a lower price point like Skechers, 
it keeps the price down for everybody and listen you get what you pay for remember that old adage like you get what you pay for sometimes and I believe that is true also in running shoes like Solomon I love Solomon but Solomon's are usually hundred and sixty dollars and up uh, most of the Solomon's that I have purchased in the past are hundred and eighty dollars and that's pretty high for running shoe prices therefore I am excited about Skechers and what they're doing and their work with professional athletes like they're trying to make inroads into the running shoe economy and that's a good thing I think for us so long as they're bringing value to the running community and the keyword of the day is go for the Skechers Ultra Go shoe and I'm curious about this question of the day value what running shoe have you purchased and I'm just gonna say ever that has brought you the most value uh, financially or economically so if you bought a shoe for fifty dollars and you got 300 miles out of the shoe like I would put that in the category of very good for value so think about it reflect pause for a second think about all the running shoes you've ever purchased like what running shoe have you purchased that was a good price point and delivered for you on all of the factors that we look at as runners whether it's durability uh, performance um, <laughs> performance thank all you for answering that question of the day down in the comments and one last point about Skechers ladies and gentlemen I actually really really enjoy marketing and just like brand development and I think this is a game changer Within the running shoe box, the shoe box that I got today in the store, they had this little magazine that outlines all of the running shoes that Skechers is producing. And frankly, this is a game changer for me. I might buy another pair of Skechers running shoes just because of this little magazine. And I'm sure other running shoe stores do this but or sorry running shoe companies do this but do they include this in every single running shoe box that they sell if they did that i guarantee their sales would go up because look at this in the back of the magazine this little pamphlet they have the men's collection of sketchers and the women's and i am shocked at how confusing running shoe companies make their different models for example with new balance like new balance your numbering system is intriguing let's just say it's it's difficult to discern sometimes and so here Skechers outlines their Meb Speed 4s and their Meb Razors and their Go Run 5 and it's just like organized and it makes sense and I thank you Skechers for including this little pamphlet in your running shoe box I appreciate that that is all folks I cannot believe it I've got Skechers in my possession and yes my first impression will happen this weekend I think I'll take them out probably for five or six miles and I'll give you my thoughts on how they do in the first run stay tuned for that and I love you and I'm going inside for dinner Woo! what a day what a day see oh by the way tomorrow likely likely two videos publishing we will see going up to the mountains stay tuned come back for that I appreciate you being here Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. So